Welcome to Air Force Officer Qualifying Test Prep Online Lesson Series. In this lesson, we'll go over arithmetic reasoning review. Okay, so you know Air Force Officer Qualifying Test is a competitive test, but if you organize yourself, it's, it's not that hard. Okay, so before we start, make sure that you have a notebook and a pen. So you could write some very important information from the video that will help you to prepare for the test. And as always, uh, pause the video and try to practice the problem by yourself. And then download this application called AFOQ to Tutoring from App Store or Google Play. It has a um, lot of questions, right? So you cannot find that many questions in any book in the market. So download this application and practice. If you want to study on your laptop or iPad, uh, you could also um, subscribe the online course so that will help you to prepare for the same test. Okay, so um, let's get started. In this lesson, we'll learn how to do arithmetic operations with integers, decimal, and related word problems. Okay, we'll also learn arithmetic operation with fraction and related what problem, exponent, percent rate ratio, factorials in geometry, we'll learn how to find area, perimeter, and volume. The first problem, so if the population of a certain city increased 25% in two years, the new population was what percent of the old? So just look the problem here always make sure that you read the question carefully to fully understand don't look, look that just the numbers okay it will help you so let's see how we explain this problem so let's the population um would be 100 right so in one year the population increased 25 percent so if you find 25 percent of one year and then multiply by two so that gives you 100 times 0 0.25 so that gives you 25, right? And then if you multiply that by two, that gives you 50. And if you add uh, 50 with the original population is 100, that gives you 150. So that means the new population was 150% of old one. Next problem. What is the area of a triangle with a base nine and a height of 25? So let me just give you an advice. Anytime if you have a geometric figure, try to draw that. It will make your life much more easier, okay? So let's do that. So the base is uh, 9, height is 25, right? So you know the area of a triangle is uh, base time height divided by 2. So the area equal 1 half base time height. Let's see how we did this problem. So here you could see here exactly what I um, did previous slide, um, half time base time height. So one half times nine times 25. So um, 25 times nine and then divided by two, that gives you 112.5 square feet. So that is the correct answer. Next problem, what is the volume of a rectangular box that has length of nine unit with four unit and a height uh, five units. So as I said, so just let's draw a rectangular box, right? So that will help you to understand the problem. That is the most important thing because you're not gonna get like exactly same problem, but it will be all similar concept. So if we draw that, so um, length is nine, width is four, height is five, right? So use that. The volume will be length time, width time, height. So multiply. 9 times 5 times uh, 9 times 4 times 5 that gives you 180 cubic unit because the unit of the volume is cubic okay it could be cubic feet cubic meter cubic inch whatever okay next problem the perpendicular of two sides of a right triangle have the length 6 and 8 unit so um length of six unit and eight units so let's do that let me just draw that so it has so you could write anywhere you want eight and six eight and six you have to find the hypotenuse right 
So this is the Pythagorean theorem. You have learned that the, the Pythagorean theorem says like a square plus b square equal to c square, right? So um, you could do the exactly same way. So that gives you x here equal to e square root over 8 e square plus 6 e square, right? So let's see here what we did. Exactly same thing. 8 e square plus 6 e square gives you e square root over 100. And if you simplify that, that gives you 10 units. Next problem, what is the e square root of 81? So, you know, e square root over 81 is very, very simple, is a 9, right? So that means a number multiplied by itself gives you the square root of that particular number, right? 9 times 9. So it might get like a little bit harder one in the actual test, but you will see that type of problem in the actual test. So you can see here square root over um, 81 gives you 9. So the 9 is the correct answer. So what is the value of 6 factorial? So a lot of people, they don't know they think like this exclamation sign, so that is actually called factorial, right? So the formula is if n factorial will be um, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, da, 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 right? So same way, so if you uh, do that, let's see how you do that. So any time factor, any factorial means you have to multiply that number until 1. So that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if you multiply all them together, um, that gives you 720, so that is the correct answer. There are many problems. Sometimes you might see like 7 factorial over um, 5 factorial, right? So you could do this problem easy way. So 6 factorial is actually 6 times 5 factorial and 5 factorial here. You could cancel out, so the answer is 6. So that's the easiest and shortcut way to do that. So make sure that you learn this. Next problem because of a flu epidemic, 36 students are absent. If this is one sixth of the total student, what is the total total school student population, right? So let's let's read the question one more time. Okay, take time and read it to see that. So um, this question is a little bit tricky. So you see this um, one sixth is the um, the population of the whole um, student, right? So what you could do, so say like the total population is X, whatever you find, X, A, B, C. So one sixth of X gives you 36. So this 36 is actually um, absent, not all the student is 36. So let's make sure that you read the question carefully, what they're exactly asking, not just looking at the numbers. So if you solve that, cross multiply that, that gives you X equal to, um, 216. So there are 216 students in the school, one sixth were absent. So that is um, 36. If you find one sixth of 216, that gives you 36. Next problem John has saved money in his piggy bank over the winter. He wants to buy a $30 computer game. If he has eight dimes, 25 nickels and 10 pennies. How much more does he need to borrow from his dad to buy the game? So you could see it's very simple. So he has eight dimes, right? So eight dimes is how much is that? Eight dimes, eight times 10, that gives you 80 cent. And then 25 nickels. So if you multiply 25 with 0 0.05, that gives you $1.25. And he has also 10 pennies, so that is um, 10 times 0 0.1, that gives you 10 cents, right? And if you add them up, so that gives you $2.15, um, but he needs $30, right? So if you subtract from 30, that gives you $27.85. Next problem, make sure that you read the question carefully before you attempt to solving it, okay? So the problem is, a pet store owner set the price of a cat food at 50% above its cost. When it did not sell, the price was reduced by 20% to $12. What was the cost of the store owner 
for a bag of cat food, right? So this is a very important question. So you might see this question many times in the um, test in different versions of officer candidate test, right? So let's do that. So say like the uh, original owner's cost was, um, was X dollar, right? And selling price is equal original price plus profit. So 50% profit here, right? So if you do that X plus 0 0.5, that gives you 1.5 X, right? Now, this 20% uh, off, 20% off on that, that is 1.5x. So if you do that, if you subtract 20% 20, 20 of that, that gives you 1.5x minus 0 0.20 times 1.5, that is equal to $12, right? Using that relation, this could say here um, 1.2x equal to $12, and then if you solve for x, that gives you 10, right? So the correct answer was um, $10, right? So the owner actually buy the, um, the cat food with $10 with 50% above the price and then bring it down to 20% and that was $12, right? So you could do that. Next problem. A student is studied for 18 hours in seven days. If he wanted to study an average of two hours per day for 14 hours, how many hours does he need to study for the next seven days? So let's see how to do this problem. So he studied two hours uh, for 14 days, right? So if you multiply um, two hour times 14, that gives you 28 hours, right? So that is he needs to study 28 hours, but he already did 18 hours. So he covered 18 hours. What is 18 hours here? Right here, right? So if you subtract 18 hours from 28 hours, so that is 10 hours he has to go more in order to make the average two hours per day for 14 days. Next problem. On Monday, the water was shut down three times. That was one quarter hour, two third hour, and one and three fourth hours respectively. How long it will? So, you know, it's very simple. Is all you have to add all together. Okay, so let's do that. So, anytime you add the uh, fraction, what you have to do, make this mixed number into improper fraction here. So, that gives you four times four plus three is seven over. Four. So now once you have like all this pure fraction, then find the common denominator. So three, four, three, four, the common denominator is 12. You see here 12. So now you have to find the equivalent fraction. So you have to multiply that by three because three times four is 12. Three here, multiply that by four, that by four, that by three, that by three. So that gives you three over 12, eight over 12 and 21 over 12. If you add them up, that gives you 32 over 12. And if you reduce it, that gives you 8 over 3. And if you uh, make this improper fraction into a mixed number, that gives you 2 and 2 thirds. So make sure that you write that question on your notebook and practice. Problem number 12. John earned $60.84 for working 12 hours during the last week, right? Um, how much did he earn per hour? What do you have to do? It's very simple. You have to divide. But if you don't know how to divide a decimal, you just need to refresh a little bit. So let me just do it. Okay. So 12 with 60.84, right? So 12 goes into 60 is clear is um, 5 times. So 5 times 12 is 60, right? Now move the decimal on the top and bring this 8 down. You could bring one digit at a time, right? And now you cannot divide 12, um, 8 by 12, right? So what you could do here, you need to put a des 0 on the top, then you could bring 4 in down because you could bring one digit at a time. Now 12 goes into 84, how many times? 7 times. So 7 times 12 is 84, right? So that is the correct answer. Next problem. A box of nail weighs one and five over six pound. 
what is the total weight of 12 box of nails so the, the purpose of doing that to refresh your um uh, the multiplication um steps right so what do you have to do you have to multiply that so let's do that so as i said always if you have a, a mixed number always need to make this mixed number into improper fraction that we did here and multiply by 12 so when you multiply uh, multiply top to top bottom to bottom and then if you divide that that it gives you 22 pounds next problem a five foot post cast eight foot shadow a nearby tree cast 48 feet shadow how tall that tree is okay so you could do here let me show you a uh, picture here so this is the tree here um five foot eight foot shadow right so the shadow is always um this is tree this is shadow right so what you could do you could use a um uh, formula you know that we did before part over whole equal to part over whole right so this is all kind of unit price related problem or proportion you could use this formula to solve so it will really really help you so five foot um three cast eight foot shadows right so what you could do here so five over eight equal to ace over 48 so now you could see here three um three shadow three shadow right so now what you could do you could cross multiply so if you cross multiply so that gives you eight h equal to um five times 48 and if you divide both sides by eight so that gives you six so six times five is 30 so the correct answer is 30. next problem a traveler drove 150 miles at 50 mile per hour and then 160 mile at 40 mile per hour how many hours did the driver take all together right so um this problem a lot of times you see in the actual test so let's solve that so the first what you have to do how long it take um 150 mile if he drove at a six, uh, 50 mile an hour so the t1 is 150 divided by uh, 50 that gives you um three hours and then t2 will be 160 divided by 40 gives you four hours so this is the formula to find the speed distance over time or time equal to distance over speed so if you add them up so that gives you seven hours so that's how how we do need to pr uh, practice so download this application and if you want to study on the website it has also the subscription it has everything you need for your officer candidate test prep 